Okay, so the oxygen system. Now there are a couple of configurations you might have. This one here is a single bottle configuration. But you also might have a, a dual bottle configuration. <clears throat> we'll look at the dual bottle configuration um, uh, on the next slide. Um, the dual bottle configuration is for later models and also some serial numbers earlier on. Um, so you, there's a good chance you'll have the dual, the dual cylinder configuration. So this picture here just shows the um, crew system with a single bottle. So you have a single bottle charged up to a nominal 1850 PSI with a pressure regulator that reduces that pressure down to about 60 to 70 PSI, sending it out to the crew mask boxes. <clears throat> You've got a single overboard discharge indicator. Now on the dual cylinders, you have two discharge indicators, but as we'll see later, it's not one discharge indicator for each bottle. It's one for the low pressure for both bottles, one for the high pressure for both bottles, but we'll look at that in a second. So you've got a single discharge indicator that allows if the HP relief um, um, disc ruptures or if the LP relief system kicks in, it will discharge overboard and blow out a green indicator disc, a little plastic disc that just flies away and you're leaving you with a red telltale indicator. So the re regulator reduces the oxygen cylinder pressure down to about 70 odd PSI and sends it out to the crew mask boxes. If the LP relief side of things starts to operate and it operates at 130 PSI, um, it kind of just bleeds off and then once the pressure reduces it stops. For the HP relief side of things, there's a rupture disc, a metal disc that ruptures in the actual bottle head itself, not, not at the skin, but in the bottle head itself. That will rupture and the entire contents of the bottle is discharged overboard through that discharge line. You've got a single gauge on the skin on the outside where the charging point is, which is on the right hand side with a charging point and a capillary line that runs down to sense the uh, oxygen cylinder pressure and, and reads it on the gauge and also feeding into a pressure transducer which goes to the DCUs and is displayed on the um, ICAS. Now that line, that sensing line to the gauge and to the DCU is a very fine capillary line. <clears throat> you have to be really careful when you undo the connections if you, un if you have to undo them because the capillary line is really kind of uh, fragile and very easily to damage and sometimes it shears off if you're not careful. So just be really careful when you're undoing the connections, the pipe connections on that capillary line. So this is a dual bottle configuration, probably the most common one you'll see. And we'll look at the locations of the bottles in a second, but they are in different places as well, for if you've got the dual bottle or the single bottle. So with a dual cylinder, 1850 PSI again, they're both charged up to, and we still have a single charging point that will charge up both bottles and a single pressure gauge that reads the pressure of both bottles. <clears throat> the bottle itself has a pressure regulator, like before, and reduces the HP down to low pressure, uh, about 70 odd PSI. And here we can see the two overboard discharge discs. But as you can see, it's not one per bottle. It's one for the HP, one for the LP. The HP relief is a bursting disc, goes off at 2,775 PSI approximately, but that changes if the temperature changes as well. <clears throat> the LP relief, it bleeds off if it starts to relieve and goes out through the LP relief discharge indicator. And again, those discharge indicators got little little uh, green disc held in place by a circlip and that just blows out if it discharges. For the HP, if it, if it discharges, it will dump the whole contents of the uh, bottle, whichever bottle it is. So on, the, um, on this dual system, each um, bottle on the LP side, so that's been reduced down to 70 odd PSI, and that goes off to supply the crew mask boxes, and also via the passenger control panel, um, um, the, the passenger uh, oxygen, which you won't find much information on 
in the Bombardier manuals because again Bombardier in the factory supply the oxygen to the cabin and kind of that's it and then it's up to the completion centre to do the rest of the plumbing. So you need to look at your supplementary manuals for the passenger side of things but broadly speaking it, it the Bombardier factory takes the supply up to the cabin kind of bulkhead and then from then on it's a completion centre. But the, we have in the cockpit a passenger oxygen control panel which will automatically deploy the um, bottle, uh, deploy the masks if the cabin altitude goes to uh, approximately 14,000 feet but it can vary because it depends on if the aircraft's had an high altitude landing mod. So 14,000 feet, boom, mask drops. Uh, there's a pressure switch in the supply line that will indicate that the um, passenger oxygen system is activated. The, before it gets to the oxygen control panel, a supply is routed to the pilot and co-pilot's um, mask boxes. And actually, the, it's not shown on here, but there is one for the jump seat as well. And also, we have a therapeutic supply. So we have a therapeutic supply valve or shutoff valve, which is operated by a switch on the passenger oxygen control panel. You can open that up and supplies oxygen down to a therapeutic line. This is optional, um, where they can plug in masks using like a Bainit connector in various points in the cabin. But that's an optional system. And there's a pressure switch for that side of the therapeutic line as well to indicate on the panel when it, once it's activated. Um, on the um, ICAS, we have a low oxy message that will come on if the bottle pressure is less than 800 psi in flight or so that's the HP side of things or if the LP supply pressure is below 45 psi and that will come on on the ground or in flight. So here we can see the um, two different configurations the dual bottle and the single bottle. If you've got the dual bottle, you'll find the oxygen cylinders located in that forward electrical compartment. It's the same compartment where the TRUs are, one above each other. If you've got the single configuration, it's installed beneath um, that panel or that uh, area. And there's an access panel on the side that you can get access to it. <clears throat> they, all have, they all look similar to this in terms of the bottle head. So you've got an on-off uh, selector on the... Um, on the bottle head itself, it's normally left in the on position. In fact, it's normally safety wire locked in the on position. The only time you turn it off, maybe if the aircraft's parked up for um, a length of, you know, considerable length of time, or obviously if you need to remove the bottle. You got um, the pressure gauge on the bottle itself, and you got the HP stage, and then the regulator stage, the LP stage that regulates the pressure down to um, uh, 70 odd psi. The crew mask boxes are a fairly standard design. So the masks are stowed inside the box with the doors closed. And in that position with the doors closed, uh, there's an oxygen shutoff valve that operates and it shuts off the supply of oxygen to the physical mask itself until we pull it out. Once you pull the mask out, the doors fly open and it activates the shutoff valve and allows oxygen to go up to the actual mask regulator. So on the, reg on the mask, there's a regulator We've got different modes that we can select. We can select normal mode. So in normal mode, we have an on-demand flow. So in other words, it only flows when we breathe in and it's an air mixture. And <clears throat> the, the regulator inside the mask will regulate the, the mixture of the air and oxygen. And the higher cabin altitude is, the higher oxygen content we get in the percentage terms. There's a 100% position. Um, which will be on demand, but 100% oxygen, no air mixture. And then there's an emergency position, which is 100% uh, continuous flow. So it, the oxygen is always flowing, even if we're not breathing. It's a single hand donning mask. So there's a um, red lever, two red levers you pull, you put kind of squeeze together just at the bottom of the regulator. That will inflate the harness and allows you to put the mask on with a single hand. And then you release the trigger and the harness elastic will then contract 
and pulls the mask and holds it in position. There's also an oxygen flow indicator on the mask box as well when you breathe in to ensure you've got oxygen flow. And there's also at the bottom of the box the microphone jack, which is normally permanently plugged in. Um, on the audio panel, they have to remember to select the mask mic if they want to use, if they're wearing the mask and they want to use it. So um, here's the uh, some locations again. So there's a single charging point. That's going to be the same for all aircraft. And then the other locations kind of vary a little bit depending on the serial number and how many bottles you've got. But you can see the single disc, the single discharge disc, the dual discharge disc. And those dual ones might be in very slightly different locations depending on the aircraft serial number. So here we can see our um, co-pilot's mask box. The, the pilot's one is similar, but obviously it's on the other side. And just above it, the passenger oxygen control panel. And on the passenger oxygen control panel, you've got the square push button switch for the therapeutic supply. And you can see the therapeutic valve there. So we push that switch and it opens up the valve and supplies oxygen down to the therapeutic lines. Then you've got your passenger control for the masks. You've got normal, close and override. So in the normal position, they will drop down automatically when cabin altitude reaches um, 14,000 feet or thereabouts. The closed position, they will just simply not work. And in the override position, you you force it to operate. The doors are open by um, a surge of oxygen pressure that pushes open the uh, doors when you select it. You'll also see a test port there. So here you can plug in a um, Peter static test set basically and create a vacuum and simulate a high altitude and you can test that the mask drop. So uh, messages and indications. So obviously, oxy low pressure caution message. That comes on if the bottle pressure is less than 800 psi, or in fact, actually, if the low pressure side of things is less than 45 psi. <clears throat> Down on the status page, you can see your oxygen contents. Uh, green, above 800, amber, below 800. And finally, but by no means least, the oxygen charging point, which is, on the, connection which is on the nose of the aircraft, on the right hand side, connection and you have a single gauge, a single charging point, and that's true even if you have, even if you have two bottles because that single charging point will charge up both bottles.